All right, day four. We have some scratch cards. A little blurb for a lovely story, but you can read the story yourself. We've got some scratch cards. The task is we've got a list of cards here, and we would like to know. Um, no, wait. We we get points for each card. Okay, got to be precise about this. We get points for each card, and we have to figure out which of the numbers that we have. That's 83, 86, 6, etc. appear in the numbers, in the winning numbers, which are on the left. And the first match makes the card worth one point, then it doubles each time. So, I mean, that's that's the story, really. Easy to forget we're still on day four, so shouldn't be expecting anything too complicated. Still, let's... Have a little look at this. So first thing that occurs to me is duplicates. And um, duplicates on the right, I, I assume, if they exist, which we don't know if they do, uh, you know, the input's kind of large. So in fact, we can probably find out if we look at, OK, just won't highlight. <laughs> Let's look at a number like 10. Don't take my input, this is mine, okay? Well, if there is an input, if there is a, if there are duplicates, there aren't any like really obvious duplicates, but I mean, there might still be, right? Wait, is there a regex option here? No. Anyway, there could be some duplicates. We don't want to assume there's no duplicates. And if there are duplicates here, they should count. So if, let's say if this was 40, let's say if there were two 41s in here, we should count that as a one and then a two to double it, I think. We'll see. The parsing shouldn't be too difficult. Um, I'm just going to use, you know, splitting and stuff like that. So that should be fine. We could probably do direct indexing, but I thought that would just be kind of unnecessary. Uh, though, anyway, just going to do that. Um, so what we want to do is, I think, okay, so let's say we get, we we make a, you know, if we were to solve this once, we would go through human-wise, we would, we would go through this, is 83 in any of these? Yes, it is, therefore, we have a one. Is 86 in any of these? Yes, so we double it. Is six in it? No, we don't do anything. Is 31 in it? No. Is 17 in it? Yes, so we double it. Is nine in it? No. Is 48 in it? Yes, so we double it. Is 50, oh my gosh, is 53 in it? No, so we don't double it. So um, in, well, I guess in, in, in principle, we could just look through each six each time, right? Just go through each of these and check against each, you know, the six items. I mean, my would be, t I would say the right tool for this is probably a, a, a set of these. Um, so I guess we'll do that, uh, but it doesn't seem like it's gonna offer any particular performance benefits um, because it's always gonna be six. So it will be in a sense, constant time. Um, I guess the the, the efficiency here, or the inefficiency, will come from, again, a fixed number, right? A fixed number of numbers on the right. To, actually, it's not always six. It's it's this slightly large number here. Um, we're going to go through each of these. And um, that will be, that will mean the complexity is something like this number times at most one at least one, and if we did it the less efficient way, it would be, well, I guess, eight. Um, which doesn't, I mean, I'm getting a step two -y feeling about this, but um, it doesn't seem really worth optimizing. Seems reasonably okay. If we did want to optimize it, 
we could possibly like i don't know i, I mean i'm never i don't really have an intuition about whether short sorting makes things more efficient than any ever but um like in principle we could work out what is the minimum and maximum of each of these and discard any number that shows up which is uh higher or lower than those but yeah i mean i don't i don't think no i mean it's it's fine i'm, I'm just i just just worth checking right um okay so the algorithm is pause the pause the game pause the game and make a set of winning numbers now okay now this would be a problem if we had any duplicate winning numbers and that was an issue if we had to count it twice or something like that but the way the problem is framed which of the numbers we have appear in the list of winning numbers so it doesn't matter if it appears twice in the list of winning numbers it makes no difference okay make a set of winning numbers set by the way in case you don't know is a it's a collection it's a list or it's like a list but with no order uh, and it's um fast to work out whether items are in it uh, or not so it's handy for that it's also also you know can't have any duplicates anyway i'm sure probably very blunt explanation of a set uh, okay, so go through, so for each, okay, let, oh, this really messed me up, let, what is wrong here? Let score be zero. Uh, for each winning, for each uh, candidate number, check if it's in list of winning numbers this score is zero make it one if score is or otherwise double it uh and then Score score against game. It is something, right? Yes. Okay. So here um we've got a game. Just think about the objects now. We've got a game which is gonna have winning. Let's call them winners, which is a list a set of ints. And candidates are just going to be a list of ints, not a set, because they may may have duplicates in it. Um, and then we're going to have a calculate score. Which is going to be this algorithm. Then I don't think we really state something pretty simple. Uh, this is going to be a let's not do that um and then we're going to have a line 
Calculate our name. Game should have an ID. Mustn't lose that piece of information. That may become important later. Okay. Looks all right. Plan. Uh, make game state. Calculate school. Make anyway. Uh, make pause line. Make calculate. We win. Okay. Well, looks all right. Okay. Now I'm going to, I'm on my laptop today, so um, maybe I can, maybe I can uh, use my iPad somehow. All right. I'll pause, pause the recording while I do set that. Okay, I've set that up and you can see the bright light coming towards me. Okay, right. Let's create ourselves some code. In number four. Right, myself. And hide the controls too. All right. Now, actually, always forget to put the trial in. Oh, wrong one. That's the trial, and the input is this big thing. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of everything. All right. Let's get started. Okay. Enough of that. Spin. Come on, Zoom, go away. Um, we'll call them, we'll call them game. It's not quite the right name for it, but. All right. Okay. 
Okay. Oh, no, you have to get away with, without passing today. Yes. Great. Okay, that'll save us some time. Those are the winners. Candidates. What's wrong here? True. And calculate score should be this final score should be eight points. What is wrong here? I've done something very silly, probably. Huh. Okay, fine. We memorize this. No, not yet. Okay, that's working. We're doing pretty well on time, so I think I will pass the line. Oh, it again. Get away, floating meeting controls. Okay. Right. I'm just going to return. No way. Okay, great. Now.
What does the long one look like? Okay, fine. And then it's some numbers. And then we can split those. Perfect, okay. What have I what have I got myself mixed up with? New line. Better? No. What am I doing here? Enough. Okay, we're good.
I know there's an extra one, but it shouldn't really matter. Okay, let's get a result now. Is 13 the right result though? I'm not getting a good feeling about that. Oh, it is the, it's okay. All right, let's try with input. Let's try that. Okay, you're gonna share. You share. So you can see the moment of truth. Okay, great. How long was that? That was about 13 minutes 40 or so. Okay. Let me switch back to this code. Yeah, the parsing, again, I don't know why I want to attempt that. I guess it didn't make any difference to my score, but maybe it'll make step two easier. In case you're wondering why I almost didn't attempt it, you know, in principle, you could just, you know, do something like this, right? And probably even there's like a, Probably even there's a better way of doing it than this, but you could save yourself a certain amount of time doing something like this. As long as you didn't have any zeros on the start, right? Okay, yeah, but I'm, I didn't do that. And maybe they'll, maybe they'll appreciate that in step two. Let's find out what step two is about. Just as you're about to report your findings to the elf, one of you realizes the rules have actually been printed on the back of every card this whole time. There's no such thing as points. Instead, scratch cards only cause you to win more scratch cards equal to the number of winning numbers you have. Specifically, you win copies of the scratch cards below the winning card. All right. Specifically, you win copies of the scratch cards below the winning card equal to the number of matches. So if card, were ten, if card 10 were to have five matching numbers, you would win one copy each of cards 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Copies of scratch cards are scored like normal scratch cards and have the same card number as the card they copied. So if you win a copy of card 10 and it has five matching numbers, mm -hmm. It would then win a copy of the same cards that the original 10 cards won. Cards 11, 12. So if you win a copy of card 10 and it has five matching numbers, it would then win a copy of the same cards that the original card 10 won, cards 11 through 15. This press repeats until none of the copies cause you to win any more cards. Cards will never make you copy a card past the end of the table. This time, the above example goes differently. Card one has four matching numbers. So you win one copy each of the next four cards, two, three, four, and five. Your original card two has two matching numbers. So you win one copy each of cards three and four. Your copy of card two also wins one copy of cards three and four Oh dear. Three and four. Your four instances of card three, one original and three copies of two matching numbers. So you win four copies each of cards four and five. Your eight instances of card four. Right. 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 Once all of the originals and copies have been processed, you end up with one instance of card one, two instances of card two, four instances of card three, eight instances of card four, 14 instances of five, one of six. In terms of this example pile of scratch cards causes you to ultimately have 30 scratch cards. Process all of the original and copied scratch cards until no more scratch cards are won, including the original set of scratch cards 
How many total scratch cards do you end up with? Okay, great. Great. Very exciting, very good stuff. All right. So the logic for this is still the same, right? The logic for the way, the logic for getting the matching numbers is the same. So this has four, two, two, Yeah, okay, let me write this down. Four. Two. Two matching numbers. Three have three has two. One matching number for four. And these have zero. Okay. Right. So what I'm what I'm hesitating about is which way we process the list. Do we process from the end backwards, or do we process from the start forwards, or do we have to do both? Um, now we could So let's say we start with this one and we can attach to it. We can ask it to get, just thinking in coding terms, if we ask the card, if we ask card six, how what other cards do you have? It will be able to answer that. If we memorize that, it should be reasonably efficient. If we ask card one, how many cards it's going to have, It will need to ask each of its cards how many cards it's going to have. And those cards will then know. And the question is, does it become, it should, I mean, we should be able to apply dynamic programming to this, right? If we, if we memorize the, the each of these calculations, then we should only need to calculate each card once, and that should be manageable. And then we can go through each card get how many cards it's going to have. We can also include itself. Can we include itself? 
no no let's not let's not do that um yeah we can ask each card how many cards it's going to win and it should be able to know so let's try out this logic so let's start off with card one Card one has four winners, so it needs to ask cards two, three, four, and five. What its winners are. What their winners are. Oh, gosh, sorry. Then we need to know what card two's winners are. Card two has two winners, so it's going to work, it's going to ask cards three and four. Three is going to ask cards four and four. Five. Card four is going to ask card five. Card five is not going to ask anyone. Card three is going to ask, well, we know this already. Card four is going to ask card five. And then again. So card one should win this number of cards. Wait, no, we haven't done three yet. So card card uh, card one should win this number, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, sorry, four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen in total. So this one wins. Fourteen cards. Now we've basically calculated everything already. So uh, card two wins this number, which is four, six cards. Card three. wins three cards. Card four wins one card. These cards were no cards, which means the result is going to be the original number of cards, that's six, plus 14, 6, 3, and 1, which is 30 cards, which is the correct answer. Okay, so this approach, in theory, should work. In theory again. But I'm pretty sure it'll work. Okay, so plan. Uh, implement. Uh, count. Calc win wins cards. We're going to need to give that as that the state. Mint compute uh, 
which should go through like put each card all or let's say sun calc wins cards each card add to number of cards originally turn number And to, to implement this, we're going to go put in in range uh, our ID plus one, two, to plus winners, call count in cards. Winners two. Oh, we have to actually implement this as well. If we go separate that out, implement uh, count winners. We need to mem memorize this too. That should just be a matter of extracting, so it should be okay. All right. And then this should get us the right answer. Let's see. Let me scroll down here. Great. All right, I'm going to switch screen share. Write the controls again. Copy this code over. to part two and reset the timer. All right, now we're good to go, right. Okay. Now let me just check this is right. This should be four, right? And it is great. Assuming I'm running the right file, which I am. Great. Okay, let me just. No, I'll leave that. Just mark it as a potential bug for later. Okay. There. Cards. Mm hmm. to avoid any off-five ones. 
So we're going to go H range. So this should be from the index to self index plus the winners and it should be length winners long Wait, I'm not really able to test this, so I think I've got to have a plus one here. Okay, and this should call that game with the index n count winning cards Definitely should be using the keyboard shortcuts for that. Okay. This shouldn't initially be winners. We should add in the results and then we should return. That. Okay, and we want to edit this. Okay, now here's where it goes wrong if I've messed something up. Ugh. 
many is it? Four. So it'll need to be one plus one. Yeah, okay, so it'll need to be that. Minus. Okay, great. That's the original. Let's see what the input gets us. All right, let's try that. All right, that was around nine minutes and probably five seconds. Okay. Well, today went pretty well. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure it was much to do with me, uh, but uh, the problem was nice. Uh, and yeah, let me switch back to the code so we can take a look at that. The problem was nice, that shows a good representation. The memoization definitely made that into a significantly faster endeavor. I think my testing tools are maybe not, could be could be neater, could be nicer. Maybe if each function returned the state and the result would be good, it make testing easier. The faster testing is, the, the easier my life's going to be. Okay, pretty good though. Double platinum. All right, I will see you tomorrow. And I'll be in a, well, I might be in a different place. We'll see. Have a good day.